Hi scrapbook friends, it's Nicole from Nicole Scrapbooks and I'm here to show you the new Geometric Frame Punch from Creative Memories. This is a brand new product release in May and when I did my May product preview video a few days ago I showed this and asked if people wanted to have a specific video about this and the response was pretty overwhelmingly yes. And so here I am as requested with a video just about how to use the Geometric Frame Punch. I'll start out by saying that this is, I think, the fourth or fifth uh, frame punch we've had. And the techniques I'm going to show you will work with any of our frame punches and actually some of our regular border punches. Uh, the way you can tell the difference between the frame punch and the border punches, they all look like this. They have these little wings on the side, but the frame punches have an additional feature and that's this little silver line on what I always call the wings. All the punches have the blue to help you align your punch to make it a continuous border. And all of them in the last year or so um, have these black lines on the front to position your paper. They all have the black lines on the blue uh, inside piece, if you can see those. And originally they only had those, and so a lot of us were um, using a Sharpie but Creative Memories heard our request and they've added those black lines to the front. So we're gonna use those features. So all the border punches have those features, but not this silver line. So this is how you can tell it's a frame punch. But if you have a regular border punch that doesn't have that silver line, go ahead and play around with it because a lot of these techniques are gonna work pretty much the same way. So all of our punches arrive flat and they close for storage. But when you want to use it, the first thing you need to do is open up the punch itself by sliding this little lever and that releases this little hook mechanism so that you then have this lever action to be able to actually do some punching. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pretend that this is a regular border punch. So if you've got any Creative Memories border punch this is the same technique you're going to use. And I'm just going to start with a piece of paper. You can see I've already punched the border on one side but just to show you we're gonna use these black lines that I talked about to position our paper. Now you can work in either direction if you wanna work, you know, going um, to the right or going to the left. For whatever reason, I like to go toward the left. So I'm gonna line this up and you'll see that my the edge of my paper, if I can do it, lifting it up, is gonna line right with that black mark. So I'm gonna line back to that black mark. Then with my thumb, I'm gonna hold the paper against this little raised lip. It is possible to punch this and not be all the way back, and that's gonna mess up your punch. So make sure you got it pressed back against this lip, lined up with this black line, and then you simply press down, punch, slide it over, and cover up the blue shape with your punch design. So the light's hitting that kind of funny. Um, but I think you can see right here, the blue line, I wanna line this up so that none of that blue is showing. You see a little bit of blue around this silver line, but the punch of the, sh the shape of the punch itself, you wanna be completely covered up. And that's how you know that your punch is going to be aligned perfectly. Again, with my thumb, I'm holding it up against the fence and I'm just gonna continue on down the line with my um, punching, and this is to just do a border. So this border stays attached to your paper. I believe all the frame punches do just because of their nature. And so there's our whole border. Now some paper does have a little bit of a excess um, little bit. Paper has about an eighth of an inch tall manufacturing tolerance. So I just snipped that off. So that made my border. And so that's just your standard border. Any of our um, any of our border punches are going to do this. But the nice thing about the frame punch is how easy it makes it to go around a corner. And for that, we're going to use that silver line. So you're going to start with the edge of your paper, and rather than lining it up with the black line, we're going to line it up with this silver line on the wing. Let's see if I can get it where you guys can see it. There we go. Silver line on the wing. Again, pressing it to the back and holding it straight. And then I like to cover up the whole silver line so I don't see any blue. I don't know if there's a rule. but So we're just gonna do the same thing we did. And you see it leaves this little square on the end. 
That's what you want because that's how you go around the frame, around the corner. All right, so here I've come to the end and I don't have enough to punch another full frame. So this is where you're gonna turn your paper and do the exact same thing and align the edge of the square that's left with that same silver line, okay? So sometimes the square will pop right off. Sometimes you might have to just trim it off. I sometimes just pluck it off with my fingers too, but. Um, and then you just continue on. It's going to let you go all the way around and punch this whole design and go all the way around your paper. And I'm not going to take time to punch it all for you right now, but this is kind of the look you can get to go all the way around your paper by using the silver line to start your first cut and then turning the corner. It works in both directions. So here we're going to line that silver line up. and punch around the corner. Now this works on any even number sized paper starting at four inches wide. And so if you start with a four inch square, you get this little shape. Um, let's go ahead and cut one of those just so I can show you that four inch is actually probably about the easiest shape to cut. So I'm gonna just trim my paper to four inches. And this one, when you line up the silver lines, the paper, oops, the paper is going to touch it on both sides. So that's that four inch um, size. And it comes to the, the silver line here and the silver line here. So we're just gonna line that first one up, punch, turn it, line the silver line up. Oops, I scooted over a little bit. Oh, well, that didn't quite work as well as I hoped I scooted. All right. All right, so even with me messing up a little bit, you can see it has a little bit of a hiccup right here. We're gonna pretend that that didn't happen. Um, trim that one off. And then I've got this same little shape. This would be really cute if you put a circle um, shape in the middle. You could cut it as a, you know, another square diamond. You can even overlap them together. Let's actually put this one that I messed up in the back and then you won't even be able to see that I messed it up because we've kind of covered this over and you get this cool kind of circular shape. It would be better probably if they were the same color, but you get the idea of how you can layer them and make kind of a circle look. So that's the four inch, the four by four square. So you can do this with any um, any even numbered piece of cardstock. So here's one that I did with a six by six square. Here is an eight by eight square. I think this paper is, I thought it was eight, eight by four. Okay, perfect. This is an eight by four. So let's go ahead and, and punch around this one just to kind of see what we we get. So since I know it's a four inch, I'm gonna start on the short end. Oops, I gotta move my little squares. I'm bad at remembering to do that. All right, so I'm gonna line up my, my ends here, the two four inches, and then I'm gonna turn around the corner and just punch. And I'm gonna pay attention to this end right here so that I don't inadvertently just punch off the edge because I don't want to do that. So this one, I got it touching the silver. So that's going to be the end. We'll turn. Punch, turn, punch, and keep going till we finish this. I think this particular uh, design works really well for yeah, like a title block on your page. You know, you could put a contrasting rectangle of paper in here, or you could just put some sticker letters. And I just think that that looks really pretty. And this was a four by eight um, piece.
piece. And so you see, you get, um, you know, with eight, you get a, basically a six inch punched area. These are about two inches. So it just kind of subtracts it down one. If you wanted to do a four by six photo and make a frame for it, you would want to start with add two inches. So you want to start with a six by eight and that would allow you to punch what would be a mat for a four by six frame. And I don't unfortunately have any pictures right handy or we could we could do that. But trust me, just to add two inches to what you want to make a frame for and that will work. So this is just how to do a regular border and a regular frame. It does make a ton of confetti. Uh, I do often like to punch on a scrap piece of cardstock just to not have to scoop this all up. I did think this made a cute little, almost a little sailboat shape. So if you wanted to have a little, some little sailboats going across the bottom of your page, you could save your little punches. And there's something else I'm going to show in a little bit where I saved the insides of my punches. But for now, I'm just going to add them to my trash pile. Um, if you're one of those people that saves every little scrap, even this one might be challenging for you. So that is our regular, regular border and frame. And this is kind of how it's designed to work. Okay, so the next technique I want to show you, I call making a mirrored border. And that is where you take the um, the punch and you're gonna punch down one side like we did up here, but then you're gonna trim it and you're gonna flip it and you're gonna punch the other side to create a two-sided border. So, you know, we talked about how this leaves it attached. This is going to detach it. But there are several different looks that you can get um, depending on how wide you trim your paper. So the first one I tried was at two inches and it turned out okay. But as you can see, it left kind of a little, um, almost a little banner right there in the middle where it overcut itself. So then I tried two and an eighth and that worked a little bit better. I didn't have any overcutting, but I had this little string almost down the middle, just a thin, thin hairline which I like, except up here it was so thin that it actually ripped, and so I didn't get that consistent look. So I tried uh, two and a quarter, and that was just, I felt like that was just too wide. It didn't kind of give me that circular look I was going for. Um, so I really like two and three sixteenths, which gives you this line down the middle, and I feel makes it look really circular. Or if you don't want any line down the middle, you can go to two and one sixteenth and or one sixteenth. And so that one doesn't give you that little um, bannery shape. It just cuts it pretty clean. And that's two and one sixteenth. Um, but the trouble is it is super hard on our trimmer to um, to measure those 16 inch marks up and down for a border. So I'm going to show you a tip about that in just a minute. But let's do the two and three sixteenth, and the technique is going to be the same either way. When I cut a mirrored border, instead of using this line to align it, I like to use the very edge of the wing. And I'll show you why when we go around to do the other side. But I'm going to line up with the very edge of this wing, punch all the way down the same technique we've used before where I, you know, cover up this, make sure you're holding it with your thumb. Um, so that your paper is completely aligned. And then we're going to come back to here. So you see, it's, uh, you can you do it on either side. This one I can't align with my thumb, so I'm making sure I push this in tight so it's all the way against the back, you know, even of the fence I can't see. All right, so that has given me my whole... Um, line. You see, I do have a little bit of a little hair on the other end. That's actually going to help me to know which um, which side to start on. So if you look at the Creative Memories trimmer, we have the measurements for the eighth and the one sixteenth of an inch, but we don't have the line. And usually when I trim with this, I like to put the edge of my pattern on the line. So like this would be the two inch line. Um, and that was for this, the one that looked like this with the little banners. But I want just a little bit more than is a line on here, but I don't want to go clear to two and a quarter inch because I felt like that 
left the line too wide in the middle. So I want to go to two and three sixteenths. And this is where you're gonna love the Creative Memory Zero Centering Ruler. It's a nice thick ruler. You know that this edge is very, very straight. And the thickness of the ruler is just about the same. It's actually a little taller than this lip at the bottom of the trimmer. So I'm gonna use my ruler and I'm gonna line it up at two and three sixteenths. And each line is a sixteenth. So one, two, three sixteenths. I'm just gonna hold that on there, make sure it doesn't slip, put my paper on here. And it's actually really easy because it, it stops it. You know, you can't, it doesn't slide under, it stops it right up against there. Cut my paper. So that's gonna give me that two and three sixteenths inch cut. Now I wanna make sure that I line it up just the way I had it before. And because there was this little tail on the end, that was the, the last part. So I know that I started with this punch with this piece lined up against the side. So I'm gonna do the exact same thing. I'm gonna flip it over. I'm gonna line this up with the side and then I'm gonna punch again down here. And this gets my very pretty border. This is this is the one I think to me is the most visually pleasing, but it is a pain because you do have to do that three sixteenths of an inch. So sorry about that. That's uh, I don't want to make anybody do math, but three sixteenths is the magic number. And then I'll just take this and snip off the the end and nobody will ever know, and I'll have this pretty, pretty border um, that looks very circular. I just think this would look lovely for so many uh, designs on, on a layout. All right, again, I forgot to put a piece of paper under here to catch all my scraps, so we'll just scoop them off and toss them in the trash right here. Thankfully, you guys can't see my trash can. Um, so that's the 3 sixteenths border, 2 and 3 sixteenths border that we talked about. Now there are a couple other things, fun things you can do with this same technique of trimming. And one of them is to cut what I call an offset border. And I love the look of this. This kind of has that, that swirly look to it. And you can do this with any of our border punches, but the frame punch makes it so super easy to cut this kind of a swirly border because the first one, you're gonna line up with the black line, all right? Just the same, that same regular black line we've always been lining up with the whole time. Line up with your black line, punch all the way down, making sure as always that you're keeping your paper straight. That's probably, the one mistake I see a lot of people make is they kind of get lazy. They focus on this and they forget about that. So definitely, definitely do this with, you know, your thumb against the back and snip this off if there's any kind of a little um, tolerance. And then we're going to use those same kind of measurements that we used with the, for the last one. Actually, to make it easy, I think I'm gonna do two and a quarter, because that will just be easy. So I'm just gonna line up at two and a quarter. That way I don't have to get my zero centering ruler. It's gonna look fine with this one. But you can adjust that however you want, and using that zero centering ruler makes it really easy to get exactly the width of line that you want here in the middle. All right. So here we go. And now the first one we cut using, using the regular border line. And this one, we're gonna cut the other side using the frame border line. So I'm gonna line it up with that silver line. And what that's going to do is it's going to cut the opposite direction exactly halfway. Doesn't that look awesome? I am so thrilled with this technique. And it's just so easy because you know exactly where the center is because that's what you use for the frame punch. And so all the kind of thinking has been done for you and you can do this um, this little, I don't even, it's not even a snaky border, I don't even know what to call it. Uh, I call it, well, I call it the offset border. So there's your offset border where you've, um, 
one side is punched with the border line and the other side is punched with the frame line and it gives you this really cool look which I think is pretty different from this right I mean they're similar but it has a kind of a different feeling so another thing you can do with this if you don't want to cut on the front and back is you could cut a regular border trim it off and here I did one that was cut with the border and here that was cut with the half and so it makes this kind of offset look, but they, they almost interlock in together. If you wanted to, you could even do a whole background page like this. Do some that are, um, you know, you could do this same cut, but starting at the halfway, you know, the mirrored and go all the way across a page. It would be a lot of work, but look really dramatic and cool. And then another thing you can do is actually use all those little confetti scraps and fill in where you punched out. Isn't that pretty? It looks like stained glass. And all I did was save the little punches. I did find that these triangles are almost the same, but they're not quite the same. So this one right here on the end, you can see there's a little bit of white showing through. It's because it was this triangle. So when you punch out, if you make sure you're, if you're planning to do this, make sure you kind of leave your punch confetti where it is so that you can tell which Triangle is which. Of course, you can't really tell. You know, nobody's going to be looking this closely at your scrapbook page. You know, so it may not bother you, um, but for whatever reason, it was kind of bothering me. So that's this little stained glass technique that you can do. And you could do that with, I don't know if you could do it with this because you're going to need a whole square to go in here. But you could definitely do it with one of the ones where we uh, left some space. You know, you could still have that you could do that stained glass look with one of these if you wanted to. I just think it looks dramatic and very, very pretty. Or this one that's just on a darker background, right? So lots and lots of options just for punching with a straight, uh, straight frame. Okay, next we're going to talk about how to punch an interior frame around your scrapbook page. So I showed you in the beginning, the exterior frame. This is the way it's designed to work. Sorry, I put it to the side and piled stuff on top of it. So this is the way it's kind of designed to work. With the frame going around the outside, that's the easy one. You just follow the markings on here. But you can also do this interior design. And the Creative Memories Japan advisors are so clever. And they came up with this technique. And it works on any of our border punches. Um, that stay attached. I don't know if it works with ones that make like a chain, but it's one of my favorite techniques to do, especially for a single page layout. It makes it look very, very dramatic. Now I will point out to you, this only works with designer weight paper. So not cardstock. Do not do this technique with cardstock. It will be too thick. It will jam up your cutter. Only, only use des the designer paper weight. You could probably use the shimmer cardstock because it's not really shimmer. It's not really cardstock. It's this thinner weight, but works great with the designer paper. Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our paper. This happens to be from the National Scrapbook Day project recipe, and we're going to fold it in a triangle. And you want to be as precise as you can Get your lines perfectly straight. Let me move it up here. Make sure that your, your sides line up perfectly straight so that you get this perfect little point on the edge. And then do the same on this end. Line it up so that you've got this really nice, crisp edge. Um, this one's a lot crisper. This one is a little bit off. The edge, but we're going to pretend that I did a perfect job of lining up my um, my fold. And for this one, I found that the measurement I liked was one and a half inches. So you want to put the square corner up at the top of your trimmer, and you're going to put the the edge over here at one and a half inches, and then you want to start your cut one and a half inches down. And if you've seen my trimmer video, you know we've talked about the different ways that you can measure here when you can't see the lines. So the housing on the blade is two inches wide and this line is the cut spot. And so the from the 
actual cutting section to the edge is right about an inch. It's a little, a little shy of an inch, so I don't like to go clear all the way, but I'm going to take my blade housing and I'm going to put this, actually what I like to do is this little white piece that's on the inside. All right, so you've got the blue housing, but it's got the white kind of undercarriage. And that one, that's the one I line up with. So I'm going to take this and line up this white undercarriage at the two and a half inch line because that's going to give me a one and a half inch cut. Whoops. All right, and then you have to turn it so that you get the same um, corner up here. And we're going to do the exact same thing. Now it's a little easier because I can line my cut line up with this where I cut before. Okay, so now you can put this aside for another project. And now I'm left with this cut out square. So this is a great technique also if you wanted to have just a square border around your page. But we want to have a fancy border. So what you want to do now is take this and just kind of fold. You could measure this, but you know, measuring is boring. Um, and I'm just going to line up exactly this edge with the cut, the, the inside of this corner. I'm just going to pinch it. And then right where that exact fold line is, I'm just going to take a pen. You can use anything you want and write and draw a line. You're going to cut this off so you can use whatever you want. You can use hot pink. You can use a pencil. It doesn't have to be archival because we're not going to keep it. Don't crease all the way. I mean, you could. It wouldn't ruin it. But I just pinch just right here where I want to show myself to make that mark. And like I say, you could measure. If you want to measure, I will not stop you from measuring. So now we're going to take our, our punch, and I like to punch on the table to give it that even pressure. But for this one, we have to be up so we can see, because we are going to use this inside peekaboo spot to see where our punches are going to be. Now you want to make your first punch with the body of the punch toward the inside corner. And you just want to remember that so that both of them are the same. So if you accidentally do it the other way, that's okay. Just do the other one the same. So there's the, my little pen line. Can you guys see that pen line? Come on. There's the pen line. I'm just going to line it up with the exact corner on here, making sure it's straight. All right. And then I'm going to punch it out. And then I'm going to do it away from the corner. I'm going to punch all the way down through these two layers. So this is why you would not want... Um, cardstock because you could really mess up your punch trying to punch through cardstock. So and I just punch off the edge and it just gives me this kind of funky edge. And then I'm going to do the exact same thing, remembering to put my the body of my punch, the bulk of my punch toward the inside corner. So then that means this is going to line up with this There's my pen line right there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and punch this one. And you notice I'm on the inside of the um, of the square, because that's what we want is the inside. And then the same thing, you just cut, punch through both of these thicknesses just as if you were punching a regular border, you know, holding it against the fence, lining up off the edge. Okay, and there you've, we've got, you know, the two edges. Now you unfold it and you're gonna wanna fold these edges. And what I found that I like to do is to match this point first. So I match those two corners together and then pinch along here. And that usually means I have got just the right little corner on the outside edge. And I'm gonna do the same on here. And you don't have to fold it all the way down because we just have to punch this last little section. So line that up, get those corners nice and straight. Get, this might be the one that I didn't have exactly square. But I want these to line up because I still have to match to punch off the edge. So we're just now gonna do the exact same thing we did before lining this all up so that it looks pretty and stays um, 
stays aligned. I'm a little bit off, but I think it's going to be okay. And then we'll do the other side. Punch off the edge. Come on, you guys. Yeah, I don't know. Somehow I messed up and that's not quite aligned perfectly, perfectly. But nobody is going to know and you guys aren't going to tell. So this one I did end up with just a little string because somehow I didn't get it lined up just right. So I'm just going to take away the evidence. And now when I unfold my border, I get that beautiful, symmetrical interior border. And after you, you know, leave this line flat, you work it out, put a little adhesive on it, you won't even notice those folds. Doesn't that look pretty? I love, love this look. And you could do this with even a smaller uh, piece. You don't have to use a 12 by 12. The same technique, fold the corners, um, find the middle, punch out, off the edge. It works great. But I just think this looks fantastic. It's just a, such a additionally versatile way to use this punch you could do that we could do the exact same thing punching on here and um you know making an interior frame in fact i'm gonna do that so i'm just gonna uh pause the video for a minute and magically in a minute we're gonna come back and this is going to be punched um to go inside this again all right Whew. let's pretend that's a little bit of magical pixie dust although that was maybe a bad idea. And here's how it looked with the um, the inside frame cut. And then I took the last remaining piece and it wasn't exactly uh, in a, increments of two inches. So I just did the same technique where I folded it, found the middle, punched to the outside. It was really close to what I could have done if I would just have had, um, I think a six by six piece. But I think that looks really pretty. That would be great for like a, professional photo or a title page. I think that, you know, just you could, you can just do all sorts of really fun things with this interior frame design. Okay, so done with that, done with my little magical pixie dust, which, yeah, we probably won't do that again. That was a little bit messy. But this was the interior frame uh, punch. But wait, as they say, there's one more and that is punching around a circle. I've also done another video on this, you've seen it before, but it looks really, really nice to do this punching around a circle technique with one of our straight borders. So for this one, you're going to need the custom cutting system jumbo circle. It might work with some of the other circles and it would probably work with the new circle cutter you just need to start with a circle piece of paper. So the first one I did was I tried the outside with the red cutting blade and it didn't quite line up. So if you really care about super precise um, exactness with your scrapbook layouts, I really, really recommend that you look up Megan Jacks. Um, she is a Creative Memories advisor out in, I think, Washington State. But she has a whole system where she has marked her um, jumbo circle. She uses the cutting mat and, and all, has all this precision. And she gets really, really nice cuts every time. I'm one who, um, if I mess up like this, well, then I'll just put like an embellishment over that. And I'm just totally fine with that. So this was the outside on the red blade. But I did find that if I used the inside of the circle, also with the red blade, I did get a pretty um, exact finished circle using the punching around a circle technique that I'm about to show you. So the first thing you do is you wanna you take your jumbo circle. My desktop is a self-healing mat, but I still like the, um, the creative memory self-healing mat so that I can cut right in the center. So that way I can save the piece of whatever paper I use and possibly use it for something else. So I'm gonna try and line this up as best I can so that I can punch in the circle. And I like to use these little um, feet on the trimmer just to line those up with the, um, the number six on here. Just 
you know, Megan measures. Hers are just stunning. She is such a gifted creator. And then I'm going to take the in, the red blade on the inside and just punch this, or cut this little circle out. So I do like the new circle cutter, but I don't think anything will replace the custom cutting system for ease of use and accuracy. Okay, so here's my circle that I've cut out. And now I need to take the, um, the punch. And again, we're gonna have to punch from underneath. And what we're going to do this time is we're going to mat, look for the hole that it makes um, and I, maybe this black might not work very well. If it, if it doesn't, I'll have to quick switch to some white. But um, we're going to look right here to match where our cuts are going to be. So I'm going to cut the first one. And for this one, this little piece keeps getting caught. So you may have to manually take it out. So now we're going to line it up. And I just want to find in here. Actually, I think I'll do this side. I'm looking at this little space on the side and I want to put it, match it to the space on the trimmer or on the punch. And yeah, it's a little hard to see on the black. I think that's it. I think you can see that little silver piece. Oh yeah, wow, looks better on the camera. That doesn't really lie. That doesn't always happen. All right, so then I'm just gonna keep punching around the circle. Like I say, because it's a circle, it's, it's grabbing in here a little bit. So it's, I mean, this is not the kind of thing you're gonna to wanna to do on every layout. It's a little bit tedious. And this is the part where I always wish I knew how to do those cool speed up, fast forward video effects, but instead I'll just talk to you guys while I do this. Unfortunately, I can't just leave the confetti in there cause I gotta be able to see. You definitely want good lighting when you do this. And I thought this this side would be easier on the eyes than that side. I didn't want to do that to you. But um, the nice thing about double sided paper is when it's all over, you can decide which side you like better. Oh, I forgot to mention with because you have this kind of circle shape, you do want to try and keep that half circle so that the part that's touching is right in the middle right here because it's easy to kind of put it like this so that the part that's touching is on the side but you want to make sure that that place where it touches the back is right there in the middle and then line up this corner so sorry if you were punching along with me and i forgot to tell you that little step but that would be my suggestion find that middle Of course, that's what causes it to get kind of stuck in here. It just bends down just enough. And you can just kind of tell by looking that this is going to line up almost just right. Come on. So maybe don't use dark paper. I think this would have been a lot easier with um, light colored paper. Okay, actually this I don't think is going to quite work. There's the edge. There's that edge. Oh, it's not quite... I don't know why it worked on my sample. Didn't work on this one. But again, I would just, you know, snip this off and put a, put an embellishment on it. Look, you guys see that it worked. I promise it worked the first time. I don't know what I did wrong the second time. Like I say, Megan Jacks has all the math. I just like to eyeball it. I think it looks fine. I think it looks great. And I would put a little embellishment over it. Um, and I think it, let's see if, how the back looks. Now nah, I wouldn't do it on stripes. Let's look at this beautiful one. Inside with the red blade, punching around, lining it up. Um, one last thing I did want to show you, I forgot for just a second, is how you can cut a circle. So we're going to start with, we're going back and we're going to cut one of these. All right, this actually works for this one in a way that some of our other punches I have not been able to figure out. So we're going to start with our four inch wide piece as if we were cutting 
the little four inch square. Let's see this one. All right. So we're, we're starting with the same piece that we would use for this four inches wide, except we also want the width of the, this one, the three sixteenths or two and three sixteenths. We want this width. So that's what we're going to cut here. We start with the four inches. We're going to cut two and three sixteenths. And because we have a straight edge, we can just go one, two, three sixteenths and cut this. This is fiddly. I will tell you, it's a little bit of a pain to do this little technique, but it's, it's cute. It's actually not that hard. So we're going to line up just here, like we did with either piece um, on the silver line. Okay. And you do have to kind of hold it with your fingers, maybe press this edge right here. I'm sorry, I don't have a better camera angle. Let's see. Can't seem to get it and still, um, yeah, it, that's the best I'm gonna be able to do. So we're gonna punch this and then we're gonna take this out. And so this is the part I told you, you're not gonna be able to line this up, but because we're lining up with these two sides, just that same kind of thing, line up the, the lines and just hold it with your thumbs as you're, as you're holding it in place, put the two pieces on here. I'm really sorry guys for this terrible camera angle. I did try to make it a little bit better. So I'm just gonna hold it with my thumbs. Well, I guess just one thumb cause I need to punch and punch. And okay, so maybe it's a TIE fighter at first. So this must not have been two and three sixteenths because I got a little, um, a little overlap. So play with this one. Um, I don't know what I did. I didn't line it up anyway. You can get the same kind of a circle-y look if you start with the four inch and then do the, the width that we did for one of these and get one of these circles to go on your layout. And that would have been much more dramatic if it would have worked out, but uh, hopefully you got the idea and you can play around a little bit with it and get the, get the little circle that you want. So that way, you know, when you do have a little space on here, look, it took me a minute to find it. I could use this as a embellishment. I could use, you know, something like this as an embellishment. I think it looks, it looks cool. And it's just gives so many different options that you can do with one punch. So yes, you can do the, the regular border. You can do the, um, the long mirrored borders. You can do the offset border. You can do a regular border. You can layer two borders. You can do a stained glass border. You can punch around a circle. Oh, you can make confetti. Woo. Um, you can do the inside frame. You can do multiple inside frames, or you can just make a frame for a photo or a title block or a journaling block. All right, all those things with one punch. That's why this was such a long video. Thanks for watching to the end. As a special surprise, I thought I'd hop on here at the end. Uh, you know, I don't like to usually be on screen, but I just wanted to thank you again so much for watching my videos, for engaging with me, on the YouTube channel, on my Facebook group. Several of you have placed orders on my website. Thank you so much. If there is ever a tool or a technique or a product from Creative Memories that you have questions about, please feel free to ask me. I would not have probably done this geometric video without you guys asking for it. I'm glad I did because it taught me some things. It helped me to kind of branch out a little bit um, I'd much rather do videos of products that you are interested in than just guessing, you know, what I like. Um, so feel free in the comments to let me know if there's things you, you want me to talk about. I know that a couple of you have asked for some really kind of broad type of things like how to scrapbook. I'm working on that. It's kind of in my head. I hope to be able to do some of that for you at some point in the future, but, um, keep asking. It's on my list. I, I do run a, my in-person creative memories business is quite busy right now, especially as we're coming out of COVID. Um, I have a student graduating from high school in a week. I have another daughter that's home from college for just a couple weeks and a family reunion this summer and things are crazy, but um, I really do appreciate this interaction. I appreciate you guys for um, sticking with me for the comments, the, the positive, um, messages that you leave for me. 
and really want to have, make this a channel that you find of benefit to you. So feel free to keep those requests coming. I will do my best to give you the kind of videos that will help you make the most of your tools and help you find the same joy in scrapbooking that I have found. All right, thanks again so very much. Happy scrapbooking, and I hope to see you here on YouTube again soon.